Zachary Visese is one of the most underhyped first overall picks I've ever seen entering the NBA. Part of this is the fact this wasn't a strong draft class, especially compared to the recent ones we've seen and the excitement about upcoming draft classes as well. Another part of it is that Visese wasn't viewed that highly among draft analysts and fans alike, even in a class that's perceived to be weaker than most. I'll admit, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Hawks taking him first overall. While I don't see a slam dunk can't miss prospect from this class, I do think there were much better ways to use the first overall pick. And while he's not the only rookie who has struggled to start this season, it is a bit magnified because of the fact he was the first overall pick and also had a lot of questions entering the NBA already. I want to talk about the struggles of Zachary Reese through his first two NBA games, what has caused these struggles, talk about if these struggles are concerning, and also talk about questions I have about his long-term upside. But before we go any further, if you're new in like basketball, I'd really appreciate if you would like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, notify whenever I release a video. If you enjoy basketball, I really think you're going to enjoy my content, and doing all those things are the best way to let me know and YouTube know that you enjoy the content so I can make more of it in the future. Anyways, let's talk about Zachary Vizese. Vizese has been almost non-existent at the rim through his first two NBA games, 25% on two rim attempts per game. Now, the fact he is struggling at the rim isn't shocking or the end of the world necessarily. He's not the most physically developed player yet, which is fine. He's still only 19 years old and a rookie. Not everyone is going to be physically developed entering the NBA, like we've seen in recent history with Paulo Boncaro, Jaron Jackson Jr., or Ben Simmons. And he wouldn't be the first rookie to struggle at the rim either. Brandon Miller was in the 21st percentile in rim efficiency in his rookie season. Jason Tatum was in the 33rd percentile in rim efficiency as a rookie. And Brandon Ingram was in the 35th percentile in rim efficiency as a rookie. And watching Reese's A play, basically all of his misses at the rim are against defenders that are just more physically developed than him. While I do believe that Reese's A will struggle at the rim this season, I don't think he will be as bad as his numbers through two games suggest. I would be shocked if this trend continues. I do expect to see some sort of improvement with his production and efficiency at the rim. I think a lot of what he has to work on are things that can be developed physically in order to be effective. He does a lot of work in terms of playing off the ball and being a cutter and running the rim. And having a playmaker like Trey Young is something that will be to his benefit. I think over the course of his rookie season, the number will increase. I think by the end of his rookie season, he's probably around 50 to 54% at the rim on around 3 to 4 attempts per game, which still isn't good necessarily, but for a rookie, it's acceptable. I think he'll have his ups and downs as he adjusts to the NBA level athletes and physicality, but I think he will so enough to suggest he can grow in this area, even if I never expect it to be a strong point of his offense long term. Now, three-point shooting in particular was the biggest selling point with Risa Say as a prospect entering the NBA. It's an area he's seen a lot of growth in over his youth career. However, he hasn't been good to start his rookie season through two games, 25% on four three-point attempts per game. Now, I'm not actually worried about it, to be honest with you guys. I think that he has shown encouraging signs as a suitor, even if the shot isn't falling, mainly in the fact that he isn't hesitating on his attempts, and he's even tried a few self-creation attempts that I'm intrigued by as well. And I think on those few attempts that he has self-created, he's done a decent job of creating separation. It's nothing special. I'm still very skeptical of his long-term upside as a self-creator, which we will talk about later. 
but I do think he has at least flash potential to do some one-two dribble stuff, maybe take a dribble, create a little bit of separation, just do things that make an off-ball suitor even more valuable. I just want to see him continue to take the opportunities given to him the way he has so far. I think those shots will start to fall eventually. I do think that he will be a better suitor as the season goes along. I don't think he's going to be this bad. At the same time, I also think he was a bit overrated as a shooting prospect entering the NBA. I wouldn't put him up there with the elite shooting prospects I've evaluated recently like Brandon Miller, Jabari Smith, or AJ Griffin. However, you can't deny the growth he's made in that area, especially over the past few seasons. He's definitely somebody that has upside to be a good to great shooter in my opinion, especially off the ball. I think his spatial awareness off the ball is really good. I think with the playmakers the Hawks have, he will continue to get good looks and it's just about keeping the confidence high, not shying away from suiting the basketball. And I think it will lead to better results as the season goes along. I wouldn't be shocked if he's a 35 to 37% three point shooter on four to five attempts per game by the end of his rookie season. So I do believe it would be a bit ridiculous to panic about a rookie after just two games in the NBA. There are plenty of NBA starters who have struggled early on as rookies, and there are also guys that I really like from this past draft class that have struggled early on as rookies as well. I do think that we have to apply that logic to Reese's A. We can't just panic and say he's going to be the worst player ever because he's been really bad in his first two NBA games. In fact, when I look at the tape, a lot of what he's struggling with are things I think will get better as the season goes along. We already knew that he would struggle at the rim. That isn't completely shocking. And I think his situation and more reps could help him in that area. And the shooting struggles are ones that I think will naturally just fix themselves over the course of the season. I don't think he's going to be this bad over the course of his entire rookie season. I would be shocked by it because I do think there's a baseline for a solid player in Reese A, and he does have potential to grow into more than that. I think that by the end of his rookie season, he's probably averaging around 11 to 13 points per game on 43, 37, 80 splits, probably makes an all-rookie team. However, while I'm not concerned about Reese A based off these two games, at least in the sense of if he's some historically bad rookie or not, I don't think that's going to be the case. I do have questions about his long-term upside. And these are questions I've had throughout the draft process and when he was taken first overall. While Reese A has potential as a tall movement shooter that can make connecting passes and play good defense, I've always had real questions about his creation upside. He's not the most explosive athlete in the world. He's not somebody that's shown a lot as an on-ball creator. And honestly, I didn't see the offensive upside on tape that would suggest he was worth a top three to five pick, let alone the number one pick. He didn't show the pull-up suiting and mid-range creation upside that guys like Jason Tatum or Brandon Miller showed as prospects. He also didn't show the versatility that prospects like Paulo Boncaro or Brandon Ingram showed at Duke. And he wasn't the level of suiting prospect to mask those kind of flaws like Jabari Smith or Michael Porter Jr. to a certain extent. I do think Reese A can be a good NBA player. And I do think it's fair to say this draft class may not have the superstar talent that others do, which led to the Hawks taking a swing on a single instead of a home run. But I still think there were better prospects who showed more during the draft process and also have more upside. Guys like Alex Sarr, Ron Holland, and Reed Seppard. Now, all of those guys have had ups and downs through the first few games of their NBA careers as well. However, the upside with all three of them is higher in my opinion. I think Reese A's ceiling as a player is a legit starter on a potential contender. A tall wing that can thrive off the ball as a suitor and finisher, make good passes within the flow of the offense, and be a positive on defense. Somebody that's in that top 60 to 70 range of players in the league. Again, not a bad player. In fact, that's a very good player, but maybe not 
quite what you would want from a number one overall pick even in a weaker draft class. Zachary Reese is somebody that doesn't project to be a star based off what I've seen prior to the NBA, but that doesn't mean he can't be a good player. He has potential to be a 6'9 wing that hits threes at a good clip, drives off the ball, and plays good to great defense. I think his ceiling as a player is similar to guys like Trey Murphy and Keegan Murray. Now, I think Trey has more athletic upside and Keegan has more on-ball upside, but I don't think it's out of the realm possibility that he's that kind of player, which is still a really good one. I just don't see high-end star upside with Risa say. I don't see the creation or athleticism to be that kind of player. Is it possible he grows in those areas? Yes, it is, at least in terms of creation. Look at the reigning finals MVP. Jalen Brown entered the NBA as a raw prospect, and he developed into what I believe is the best second option in the entire NBA. Is it possible we see VCSA develop into that? It is because anything is possible. However, begging on a player having outlier development, like it was with Jalen, isn't a good way to look at it. The reason I'm skeptical of VCSA ever being a star is because it will take outlier development in terms of his on-ball creation, and I don't think that's something you can bank on. You wouldn't bank on a player being the next Giannis Antetokounmpo or Kobe Bryant just because they put up similar numbers to what they did as rookies. That's just not how this works. So for me at least, the expectation for VCSA as a player, regardless of draft position, is a starting level player on a potential contender that puts up around anywhere between 14 to 17 points per game on relatively good efficiency. But I would love to be wrong about this. I would love for him to see monumental growth as a creator. I would love for him to make me look foolish and become a Tatum level player or be what I think Brandon Miller can be as a player. But at the end of the day, only time will tell. But that's the end of this video if you made it to this point. Thank you so much. Again, haven't already liked, subscribe, hit notification bell, notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball, and if you enjoy basketball, I think you'll enjoy my content and doing all those things are the best way to let me know and YouTube know that you enjoy the content so I can make more of it for you guys in the future. Let me know what you think about Zachary Visa say. Do you think he should have been the number one overall peg? If not, who do you think should have been the first overall pick? Are you worried about his slow start to the season? Or do you think that it's people overreacting and he'll be better as time goes along? What do you think his ceiling as a player is? Do you agree or disagree with my assessment of him as a player and him being the number one pick? I love to do all of that in the comment section down below. But with that being said, have a nice day. And I'll see you guys in the next one.